Say, this is my Bible. I have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. It is inerrant, infallible, incorruptible. Today, I will be taught the word of God that will go into the soul of my heart and produce not 30, not 60, but a hundredfold. I decree my mind is attentive. My heart is receptive. I shall, I must, I will be changed in Jesus' name. Every time they mess with Jesus, he rebuked them. <laughs> you a little faith. Y'all ain't got no faith. I'm doing all these miracles and y'all scared of a storm. Waking me up. I need to re regenerate. <laughs> and Jesus got to come back up there to the boat, top of and it's, peace be still. Speak to the storm and the waves. Tell the storm peace and the waves be still. And it became calm. The thing is, they could have did the same thing. Unbelief. He kept rebuking them. He had to get that, that unbelief out of them before he left. Oh, ye a little faith. Yeah. How is it that you have no faith? Yeah. They could have did the same thing. That's what we do. We run into somebody else that we feel is superior. The same word supposed to be in you. Yeah. Same word. Now, I understand sometimes we do have to get, get some agreement and stuff. I'm not saying that. But we'll do that before we even speak. Have you spoke to it? No, I just need some prayer. You know what you want to tell people like that? Leave me alone. Don't mess with me. You haven't even spoken. I'm trying to think. Go over to Mark chapter 9. That concluded uh, the limiting power of unbelief. Tonight, we're probably just going to get to introduce this right here. Uh, getting to the root of the cause. Getting to the root. I mean, no, if you don't get to the root of it, nothing is going to happen. Now, I'm going to paraphrase, because I, I can't read all of this, but let me see where I want to jump in. Okay, let, let me just paraphrase, and we'll jump in at 23, but I'm going to paraphrase. Uh, Chapter 9 for Jesus takes Matthew, Mark, I'm sorry, no he didn't, Peter, James, and John. <laughs> he takes them up to the mountain of transfiguration. He's transfigured up there, right? Elijah and Moses comes, talks to them. His face began to light up. His clothes even began to glisten. And so he has been transfigured there, right? The law and the prophets showed up on the mountain to talk to him, give him a pep talk so he can finish strong. That's what that represents, the law and the prophets. And so they come down. He tells his disciples that's with him, don't tell anybody what you saw until after. And so they come down the mountain. It's a big commotion, a bunch of people. And they, they run into Jesus. And he's like, what's going on? And, and the daddy of this boy says, I brought my son to your leadership. Well, maybe we better read that. Okay, it's verse 9, Mark 9 and 9. As they were coming down from the mountain, he gave them orders not to relate to anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man rose from the dead. They seized upon him, they seized upon that statement, discussing with one another what rising from the dead <laughs> meant. They asked him, saying, da 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 this and da 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 that. And so... Let me see. Okay, verse 14. When they came back to the uh, disciples, now this was uh, Peter, James, and John, and Jesus. When they came back to the disciples, they saw a large crowd around them, and some scribes arguing with them. Immediately, when the entire crowd saw him, they were amazed and began running up to greet him. And he asked them, what are you discussing with them? And one of the one of the crowd answered him, teacher, I have brought you my son. I have brought you my son possessed with a spirit. Say a spirit. spirit. 
which makes him mute. So he wasn't mute, but the spirit made him mute. You see this? Verse 18. And whenever it seizes him, it slams him to the ground. And he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and stiffens, uh, stiffens out. I told your disciples or your leadership to cast it out, and they could not do it. Now, let's stop right here for a minute. Well, let's see what Jesus said. They could not do it. Verse 19, and, he's, and he answered them and said, Oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. He talked to his leadership. How long y'all think I'm going to be here? I only got three and a half years to do this. How long shall I be? How long do I have to put up with y'all unbelief? Now, we got a little issue right here. Because when Jesus sent them out by twos to heal the sick, cast out devils, and, and work miracles, they came back to him rejoicing. Did they not? Now, are we talking Bible? They said, Master, even demons are subject to us in your name. They were excited that demons were literally listening to them. And he said, rejoice not. He said, I saw Satan cast out of heaven, fall this lightning from the sky. Don't rejoice that demons are subject to you in my name. Rather rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Because you're going to see one of y'all casting out devils today. He's going to go hang himself and end up in hell. Don't get caught up on the gift. That's right. That's right. Yes. Come on, My question is, Mr. Kenny, what happened from when he sent them out to now? Somewhere in this time span, we don't know how long it was, their faith totally dropped. They went from a place of exercising their faith to do the work of the ministry to now they can't even deal with this boy that has a demon. That, that's why I'm trying to get across to you that faith yesterday don't mean it's faith tomorrow. You can be in faith strong today and not have an ounce of faith next week. Because faith has to be fed. And I'm pretty sure it was challenging to feed their faith if they were just watching Jesus do everything. See, mm. now this is just me. If I would have been there, Jesus working me, I'd say, I'd say, Rabbi, let me get in there and get some of that. I mean, how you going to work your faith? You just always, yeah, Jesus. And then see, look. They ain't go taking Peter, James, and John again. We don't never get to go nowhere on the ministry trips. Y'all know the other disciples probably had some issues. Why he always taking Peter, James, and John? Hopefully this answered it. Y'all don't have no faith. That's why I'm taking them. I can't take y'all nowhere. Y'all don't have any faith. Okay, I got it. Oh, man. He, <laughs> he answered them, oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? So he was talking junk. How long I put up with you? Y'all leadership. Huh? You ain't like y'all lay people. Y'all in leadership. I'm leaving my church with y'all. And you can't cast the devil out of boy. Verse 20, they brought the boy to him. When he saw him, immediately the spirit threw him into a convulsion. And falling to the ground, he began rolling around and foaming at the mouth. That's how demons do, they roll. Y'all seen that Sunday, right? They like to roll. And foaming at the mouth, verse 21. And he asked the father, how long has, he been, has this been happening to him? And he said, from his childhood. So he, he wasn't a child now. He was a young man. So he had this demon for a minute. From his childhood, 22, it has often thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. 
But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Listen, this was not only the spirit made him mute. The spirit threw him to the ground violently, made him roll. The spirit threw him in the fire and the water. This was also a suicidal spirit that was trying to take this young man's life. And it had been going on since he was a child. And the disciples couldn't help him. What if Jesus was not coming down the mountain when he came down the mountain? He said, help us. 23. And Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Listen to this. Immediately, the boy's father cried out and said, I do believe. Help my unbelief. Now, that sounds like an oxymoron. I believe, help my unbelief. He was like, I believe you can do it, but not sure if you can do it for me. Now, now, how many here know, know God is a healer? Believe he'll heal. How many know that God has blessed us? He'll meet all our needs. Okay, I believe. We, we, all, we say we believe that. Help my unbelief. Where's the unbelief part? I don't know if he'll do it for me. I know I've seen you healing other people, casting devils out of other people, but I don't know if you'll do it for me. I believe. I know you can do it, but I don't know if you'll do it for me. Twenty-five. When Jesus saw that the crowd was rapidly gathering. See, people be signifying. They want to show. They just be showing up. They, listen, look what he did. See, today's preacher would have said, let me get 50 more views, 50 more on there. Y'all know how they do? I need, I need 100 more people to get on before I release this word. Somebody, somebody put my cash app in the comment section. I'd be like, you haven't even said anything in putting a cash app up there. <laughs> when Jesus saw the crowd was rapidly gathering, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, you deaf and mute spirit, I command you, come out of him and do not enter him again. After crying out and throwing him into a terrible convulsion, it came out and the boy became so much like a corpse that most of them said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him and he got up. When he came, in, came into the house, his disciples began questioning him privately. That was smart. They said, why could we not drive it out? That's a legitimate question. Now, let me, let me, let me get your translations right. Because King James, even the modern English translation, some of them got it wrong. And so we have built... Uh, Sister Tracy, hold doctrines on fasting and praying. I had an older mother tell me, um, she said, I had an encounter with a demon one time, and she was like, I couldn't get that devil out. She said, I said, I ain't been fasting and praying enough. Now, um, we're going to answer that. Let me ask you a question. When he sent them out two by two and they was casting out demons, were they fasting? So casting out demons is not connected to fasting. Listen to this. This is the proper translation. That's why y'all need an NASB Bible. Why couldn't we drive it out? Verse 29. And he said to them, this kind cannot come out by anything but prayer. Most translation, most manuscripts do not have fasting. They added that for emphasis. Jesus did not say you got to fast and pray. He said this kind does not come out except by prayer. Now, let me help you out because we got to keep going back. He is not talking about the demon. He dealt with their unbelief. He called them faithless, unbeliever. Why couldn't we cast him out? And he said this kind cannot come out by anything but prayer. He was not talking about the demon. Another one of the synoptic gospels say, because of your unbelief. He told them what the problem was, and then he gave them the solution. He said, this kind 
come not out but by prayer. What kind? Unbelief. Not the demon. Your inability to confront the demon is unbelief. This kind is talking about this kind of unbelief. You kill unbelief in prayer. You don't kill unbelief running laps in the church. Cutting cartwheels. You kill unbelief in prayer. Why? Because just like John said, I must decrease that he may increase. In prayer, your flesh is dying. Fasting is good. We just came off a of fast. It's good. But you can come off that fast and still not have no power. Because you're full of doubt and unbelief. You just lost some weight and cleared your skin up, but, but you don't have no power. Because we don't fast for power. We fast to discipline ourselves so we can tap into the power that's already available. But Jesus said this kind of doubt and unbelief only goes out through prayer. Y'all ain't been praying. Because I'm here. That's what he was telling them. Y'all, y'all haven't been praying. You haven't been pressing in. You've just been watching me do stuff. And now when I wasn't here, y'all couldn't get the job done because of your doubt. So this kind of doubt and unbelief only comes out through prayer. Why? Because hopefully you're not in there with a laundry list for God and, and, and asking God to do this stuff. Hopefully you're in there telling God to kill you and to take everything out of you that's not like him. And hopefully you're being transformed in prayer. See, we've been taught so wrong too. We just was taught you just talk to God when you need something. What kind of relationship is that? If your kids only come and talk to you when they want something. If your spouse only wants something and they talk to you. What kind of relationship is that? So what we have with, with, with God is just a monologue. We just go tell him what we want him to hear. We don't let him speak to us. We don't wait on him to touch us. We don't wait on change to happen. We just, okay, I got my laundry list out. But, but, but it's change taking place. Because it's in that place of prayer where that doubt and that unbelief is driven out. It's dealt with there. Because you can't come out of the presence of God and be operating in unbelief. So they couldn't get it done. Isn't that amazing that they got it done in one season, but they couldn't get it done in this season because there was no consistency. See, you can't, see, you can't celebrate your victories too great and you can't get bent out of shape over your losses because I'm telling you the difference between manifestation can be a season. You can be out there just doing it this season. That was a season Mike Tyson was knocking everybody out. In about the first round. I was like, I wouldn't even pay no money for that. Because, I mean, it's a waste. He, he was, I mean, he was knocking them out first round. First couple of punches, Iron Mike. That's all you was hearing about. That was one season. But then Buster Douglas stepped on the scene. And I saw that fight. And I was like, hold on, did I just see Mike get knocked out? He broke Mike. That was the end of Mike Tyson as we knew it. He broke him. And now other fighters begin to say, man, he's vulnerable. He's not unbeatable. So one season he seemed unbeatable, and then this season seemed like he can't win. So you can't get too high on seasons of success. Boy, I was I was moving in the gifts and I was I was preaching and what the people was rejoicing and you uh, know uh, <laughs> yeah what, what you doing now because you know we we like to tell a story about the good old days yeah I remember the good old days I was I was casting eight demons out of ten people at the same time okay <laughs> what about today you know. 
We had legs growing out and, you know, with miracles. Okay, what are you doing today? I, I don't like you staying in the past, so I, I want to see it today. You know what I'm saying? I like to see it today. I thank God for everything he's accomplished in my life in the past, but I can't live there. That's stale manner. That's stale manner. We're supposed to be seeing fresh moves. Fresh manifestation. People celebrating past victories. Yeah, our good old, no, we're here, 2023. Almost halfway gone. What have you done? Are you any different now than you were this time last year? Disciples were going backwards. They were not progressing. You used to cast demons out. Now you can't even cast the devil out no more. What's wrong with y'all? Unbelief. Okay, how do I say that, Holy Ghost? Okay. Okay. I don't know the word to use. So unbelief manifests when there's a lack of spiritual activity in your life. Unbelief manifests when there's a lack of spiritual activity in your life. If you're not praying, if you're not studying, if you're not in the house of God, unbelief is there. And I got some media members that, that, that look at us. Hopefully they're looking at us. I mean, I mean, I hope they're looking at us, you know. But you need to get in the house. You need to get in the house. We appreciate you tithing and, you know, but you need to get in the house. Because activity is taking place. When, 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 when my mom transitioned, she, you know, when I woke up that morning, I had like 20 missed calls from the hospital. And when I finally called, they was like, um, your mother went into cardiac arrest this morning. And like she was gone 15 minutes. But we brought her back. Now, I know that the brain without oxygen for 15 minutes, what's, what, what's going to happen? So when I get there, she's already hooked up to the, to the ventilator. She, she's not cognizant. And they was like, you know, and I was like, well, first of all, she had a do not resuscitate. First of all. Second of all, she's gone. So y'all need to run some tests on her mind to confirm that she's gone. And they did, and they said, yeah, her, her, her brain is gone. I said, pull that tube out of her. She wouldn't want this. Well, it was, it was no activity. It was no activity. Some people like that in the spirit. There's no activity. And what happens is you get hooked up to a ventilator because you get a, a hit and that's artificial because you don't sustain it. And it doesn't sustain you. And so when there is no activity in the, in the things of the spirit, you get into a place of, of unbelief and doubt and you can't produce God's will and his kingdom in your life. Praise the Lord. I'm out of time. I could. I'm not out of word. I'm just, I'm out of time. That time. Thank you for watching Transforming Lives. We hope that this message has been a blessing to you. Our mission is to raise up a body of believers that demonstrates the power of the word in every arena of life. Sowing a seed to our ministry will help to fulfill our mission. There are multiple ways to give to WLCI. You may text to WLCIG to 54244 or give through our website at www.wordlifecenter.org. Or you may also send a seed offering to Post Office Box 293, Kannapolis, North Carolina 28082. The Word of God says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Thank you in advance for supporting World Life Center International. Hello, I'm Apostle Jeff Sanders of World Life Center International, and I want to invite you to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. 
If you haven't made this decision, I promise it's the best decision that you've ever made. And I just want to encourage you to pray this prayer with me. It's real simple. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died on the cross, and on the third day you got up with all power in your hand. I ask you to come into my heart. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. Forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me with the precious blood of Jesus. And Father, I vow to serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're saved. Now you need to take the next step, get connected to a Bible teaching church. Uh, wherever your area is, find a church that teaches the uncompromised word of God. If you're anywhere within driving distance of Word Life Center International, we would love to have you right here at 1124 Rosewood Avenue. And if you need to reach out for prayer or anything, the information is on the screen. Let us know that you received Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. We don't have any way of knowing how to pray for you or that you made this decision if you don't reach out to us. So I encourage you to do that today. And until next time, remember to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. To represent him and to work miracles and to cast out demons in his stead. Right? So not only were they using his name, but they were in his stead. They were representing him. So many times people represent him, but they, they don't have... Uh, he don't have his name. They trying to show up with another name. <laughs> or they show up in the name and they're not operating in the exusa. The exousia, which is the power of attorney. So demons are subject to us in your name. He said, I don't get caught up in that. He said, rather rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Jesus did not let them get excited about that because that's not supposed to be a big deal for a believer. We here at WLCI would love for you to come visit us where our pastors, Jeff and Michelle Sanders, teach the uncompromised Word of God. Their mission is to raise up a body of believers that demonstrate the power of the Word in every arena of life. Come visit us at 1124 Rosewood Avenue in Kannapolis, North Carolina. From the author of Occupy comes a new bestseller, Capacity. The ability to hold and handle what has been given. Order your copy of Apostle Jeff Sanders' newest book, Capacity, now available at Amazon.com. Capacity is available on paperback and also on Kindle. Let's stay connected. We have multiple ways for you to connect with us. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. For more information about our ministry, visit us online at wordlifecenter.org or call us at 704-298-0845. Thank you for joining us today in Transforming Lives. We pray that the message has blessed you and that it has pulled you closer to God and His Word. Until next time, remember to be transformed by the renewing of your mind.